Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. This is Marilyn Gale. Listen, guys, Wendy is at it again. Didn't she learn when she went at it with uh, Judge Mathis? Remember that? I mean, Judge Mathis turned her every way but a loose. And here she is going at it with Howard Stern. Now, you know how raw he can be when he wants to come at him and he's going to turn you around and around and he's not going to let go. Let me let me read you this article. Two media greats are going head to head. On Wednesday, Howard Stern spent a chunk of his popular Sirius XM radio show criticizing Wendy Williams. Slip of the tongue, sorry. After the former radio personality turned talk show host suggested Stern had lost his shock jock edge. Jealous bitch. You're nobody to me, Stern 65 said, amongst other digs in his long, explicit field rant. You'll never be me, Wendy. You'll never be me. You can pretend to be me. You can pretend to be like me, but you're not. You don't have my wit and you don't have my talent. You couldn't have that career. You're a fly. He called her fly. Guys, have you ever seen a fly? That's the one of the ugliest um, insects on earth. You know, look at the movie. Look at the movie. Anyway, let me continue. All began earlier on William's syndicated talk show, The Wendy Williams Show, while discussing Stern's upcoming book, Howard Stern Comes Again, his first new title in over 20 years. Williams couldn't help but shade him for what he implied was a toned-down attitude. Howard is so Hollywood right now. And Howard, I love you, but since you've gone Hollywood... Everything you say is so predictable, Williams 54 said, explaining that Stern used to be one of her heroes. Every story is going to be about, oh, I love this one. And then he went on their yacht. He's a Hollywood insider, which which sucks. You started like me being of the people, but at some point you sat behind the microphone for too long and now you are the people, Wendy at at it. It hurts. Uh, <laughs> Wendy Way- Williams is nutty. If Williams thought Stern was being predictable, then she surely must have seen his fury coming. After hearing her comments, the radio veteran didn't hold back on his own show. Beginning by shooting down, Williams claimed that he had gone Hollywood. What evidence do you have that I'm Hollywood, honey? He said, I grew up a scumbag and I'm still treated like a scumbag. What, because I found success now? I'm Hollywood? What cause I know? Let me read that again. What cause I know? Huh, that's wrong. But anyway, I'll read it like the article says. What cause I know, Jimmy Jim? Uh, what? Oh, that's that's how I did they didn't put a comma behind it. What? Because I know Jimmy Jim Kimball. Who am I hanging out with? She doesn't know who I'm hanging out with. She doesn't know what I do in this world. She doesn't know who I'm effing with. Okay, Howard. All she talks about on her show is Hollywood, Stern allege. That's as Hollywood as you get. If anyone in Hollywood called her to hang out, she'd be there in two seconds. All of that is a projection. Stern went on to un- reveal that he thought Williams' comments didn't take into account how hard he works. Here's my weekend. I go home, I write stuff for this show, I wrote stuff for my book, and then I stare at the wall waiting for the next show, he said. Ooh, I wouldn't admit to that. I work my ass off on this show, day in, day out, to make sure that it's good, Stern continued. Just shut up. Keep your, keep your opinion to yourself about me. I have struggled my whole life through thick and thin to actually get out there and do something that actually means something to people. That's such an insult to me. From here, Stern questions 
what Williams' impact in the industry has been. What has she said that's controversial? When has she put herself on the line, he asked. What has she done, actually? I don't even know. You're not the queen of all media. You haven't earned that title. You haven't done anything. You haven't had the career I've had, Stern said. I had radio stations firing me. I had the government on my ass. I never backed down from a fight in my life. Such an edgy broadcaster. When did you ever go to war with anyone? When did you fight with the FCC? When did you have the religious rights coming up your ass and people throwing you off radio stations and not knowing if you continue your career? Have you lived my life? Broad doesn't have an original thought in her GD head, Stern also quipped of Williams. She's busy being Howard Stern. Other things Stern said amongst his insults were personal jabs at Williams for her appearance. Her health battles, including that headline, Making Fainting Spell, and those reports about William Williams' husband, infidelity, which she has denied. What have I done to this woman? Nothing. I've been gracious to her, Stern said. Worry about your husband, not me. F you and your dumb showing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and your mystery illness. <laughs> she disappears for two months. Nobody knows why. And now she's questioning me. Thanks, honey. I never fainted on my show either. <laughs> I'm not somebody you want to F with, honey. I don't want to hear your bull BS. And you're you're not a nice person. Well, he got that right. Nobody likes you. That's why you can't go Hollywood, he continued claiming. People do not like her. The staff, he put in, that's in parentheses. So he said the staff don't even like her. And he was dancing all over at the Wendy Williams show. And they were dancing. The staff was dancing when Wendy Williams show and she was not there. She's a big pain in the ass. I hate to break the news to you, honey. Good luck. No, that's not what it says. Good thing you hurried back. Let me read that again, guy. Okay, he's saying that the staff danced all over the place when she was out, that she's a pain in the in the ass, and he's breaking the news to her. Good thing you hurried back. Because if she would have took some more time off, I don't think she'd have a show. Nobody, I mean, it has, this is me talking now, it's not the article. I mean, it's been reports that the staff was happy. They didn't have to deal with her and Kevin's BS with his control and behind. And if she, in essence, I'm thinking how Stern is saying, if you hadn't come back, you wouldn't have a show. Because you was, and that's why you hurried back, uh, because you knew it. But anyway, back to the article. Both Williams and Stern have had long careers in radio. Stern began in 1976 and Williams, and Williams in 1989. And it goes on and on about, you know, Wendy, and I don't want to read that. I'm going to put the article in, um, the description box so you can read it. But, He's saying, Wendy, you wish you were me. You can't be me. Uh, With her coming at him like that, I thought coming back would, would have her ease up. And just because you say, I love you, Howard, but. Now, when you put that but behind it, it's like erases, erases that previous you know, I love you, Howard. That erased. That's erased. So I'm not sure what. I mean, I know she has to come back and she has to be in a certain form in order to grasp her audience again, whether it be in the studio or whether it be, you know, the the audience um, at home watching. But to come after people like. Judge Mathis, Howard Stern, who they don't play. They built their careers out of being straightforward, no nonsense, no filter 
They're going to tell you how it is and how it used to be. And if you say something, they are going to let it rip on you, which Howard Stern did. I mean, he says that her... <laughs> Her mysterious illness and that little stunt she pulled about fainting, which to me, he's saying that's what it was, a stunt. And uh, I don't know about that. I I don't know. I don't know. But that's what I'm thinking he's implying. And then to say that her, that the staff was happy that she was out. And like I said, he's not saying anything. Then he goes to he goes to um, the allegations of Kevin. He hints around with that. So she's just going after people, and she has all that baggage. She Howard Stern has so much ammunition. I mean, anybody. Everybody has a lot of ammunition when it comes to dragging Wendy Williams in the mud if they wanted to. And with that much ammunition towards Wendy, I mean, I think she can be edgy without being insulting. And that was an insult to uh, Howard Stern, what she said. Um, Whether he took it too far, I don't know. Because that could mess with his career. If people just listening to Wendy's, which she, you know, she has a lot of fans still. And, or should I say fanatics? Okay. And they could, they could be listening to both Wendy and Howard. But yet, like maybe Wendy a little bit more in her style. By her, him just come by her. No, the slip of the tongue. Mm. By her just uh, coming and saying he's lost his edginess and you know he's Hollywood. That really could sway some people from listening to Howard Stern. You know, because people change like the weather. A lot of people. Well, even on YouTube, uh, subscribe. And then you say one little thing that they don't agree with and they unsubscribe. So people can be fickle. They can be fickle. So if enough people are fickle, enough of Howard Stern's fans are fickle, he can lose ratings. And uh, I don't know. I, I I was gonna check back, you know, now and then to see how Wendy has, you know, see if she's changed a lot of her. Um, what could I call it? She's just a mean person. If she could change some of that, I, and I thought she really would, you know, after you have a health scare, you know, so, you know, to it in her uh, uh, assessment, you know, she's just saying. Maybe assessment is not the word I want to use, but she's saying she has this Graves disease and thyroid and whatever. And and when people have an ailment, sometimes they get a little softer, you know, because they have more empathy with people. So they're not just going to rip you like they used to. And I did. I thought she would change. Now, I'm not watching Wendy Williams. I just, uh, this is an article that I read about Howard Stern um, and and her and this, this, uh, this feud, I guess, they're having now. Because I don't think Howard's going to forget about it now. Wendy Williams, uh, maybe she didn't mean it to the extent that Howard Stern is taking it. However, you can't, you know, she can't tell Howard Stern how to feel about what she said. So that's the thing. Uh, A lot of people uh, are going to look at this and say, oh, that is too silly. But when words, you know, words can hurt when words are put out there and uh, they stay out there. So a lot of times you cannot like... um, Judge, um, what is her name with paternity court? Once you, once you ring that bell, 
It cannot be unwrung. Once you put those words out there, you can't take them back. And uh, uh, Lauren Lakes, that's her name. Judge Lauren Lakes with fraternity. She always says that when she's talking to people, when a woman might say, you know, it's not your baby. And it really is the baby. But, you know, when she gets mad, it's not you. You're not the father. Well, you have rung that bell, she says, and that's going to be stuck in that man's mind. You said that. And even if it turns out, you know, that the baby is his, uh, and you know, that's, a, that's just a bell you just don't want to ring. She has, Wendy has rung that bell. And so if Stern and her get to be friends again, and um, it would be a surprise to me because that could ultimately you know hurt his ratings if and because that's why people watch him his um his directness his edge people watch her because of her edge uh which i think she has lost value because of what's happening in her personal life anything she says about somebody you know like i said people got ammunition so anything that Wendy Williams say about somebody in the back of the, everybody's mind, and you guys know it, they're going to think, you better take care of you and Kevin and leave everybody else alone. You better, you know, uh, not throw stones while you living in your glass house with dirty windows. So anyway, I'm going to end it there. And um, I hope you guys tune in again. Uh, if you have not subscribed, please hit that uh, subscribe button and that notification bell. And I'll be back to bring you another story. Thank you for joining me. Have a good evening. Good night.